what's up youtube you checking out the frequent flyer and today i have the king kong q90 here and i just wanted to show you guys what i'm going to do as far as uh the receiver option i'm going to be using this free sky receiver here this little receiver i don't know the name of this receiver but it does s bus and ppm it's just a matter of soldering these pads here where you have the pads bridge that down the bottom if you bridge the bottom two is s bus see if we can get it to focus and if you bridge the two on the top then you can do ppm and the pad here is for a ppm on the end then we got our ground we got our hot wire here positive and then we got the s bus wire the yellow wire so the King Kong Q90 comes with this, and this is to hook up the receiver. And so they're preparing you to go into UART 2. So this is UART 2 right here. I guess you can go into this UART 2. Well, I guess you can go into this UART as well, but this is UART 2 here, and this is where the S bus is, and this one here in the front. And so even if you want to go um, DSMX, which I usually go, but this time I'm not going to go DSMX because I have a bunch of DSMX receivers and I have a bunch of projects that I have to build. And I just had this little free sky receiver laying around, so I figured I might as well utilize this one for this build here. And I'm I'm going I'm gonna let you guys know now. I'm gonna try to get this thing a little lighter. Because there's no reason that this, um, I don't see any apparent reason that this um, flight controller here should still be in the case. So I'm going to remove this from the case and try to fit it in here some kind of way. As you can see, I already put some standoffs. Uh, well, I already extended the standoffs with little, let me get a screwdriver to point with. Here, I put little washers on here, little nuts to try to extend the height of this top plate here. So I made it a tiny bit taller. I might be looking to make it a little even taller than it is now, uh, just because I'm, I'm about to try to fit this in there and the receiver. So I might not do that for this video. This video here is just gonna show you how I'm gonna handle adding the free sky receiver to it. So we're gonna use this that King Kong supplies with. This is an extra battery strap. So let's tear into that. Pull this out. Sit the battery strap on the side. I might use that for something else. And, <laughs> and so I'm guessing they should have already lined up the wires the signal wires and everything where they're supposed to go focus okay it's trying to focus okay i guess that's good enough but anyhow the yellow wire is the s bus and the green wire here next to it is the wire that you'll use if you're going to go the smx so if you're following this and you want to go DSMX, you're going to use that third wire. So the first side here, let's look at it this way. So it's going to plug in this way. So all the way to the left here is going to be your ground. Then the next pin is going to be your hot wire or your positive wire. And then the last one on the, the last pin on the end here is going to be your S bus wire. So it's going to go in like this. You're going to select serial RX on UART 2. And then you're going to go uh, S bus or satellite. Um, or you can go spectrum with the satellite. But what we're going to do, we're going to remove the green wire. I'm thinking about just cutting it 
but I don't want it to be anything there at all. So I think I'm just going to use the blue alien to remove it. So we're going to remove the second one on this side. That's the third wire that I pointed out. I'm just going to lift that up a little. We should be able to just yank it out. Really didn't take any force at all. So now we have all the wire, only the wires that we're going to be using. Just cut that there. Okay, so now we're going to strip a little bit of this. Expose some of the wire there. I usually use my fingernails. Just pull some of that off until it exposes some of the wire. We're going to take advantage of the fact that these wires are colored too. So all you really have to do is put the signal wire which is the yellow wire right here. Just match the wires up. Just remove these three wires here and put these, solder these on in those spots. Okay, so we got the wire soldered there. So now we can just plug this in here. Now, is we're just going to use some double-sided mounting tape to put it here. Okay, so we got the mounting tape on here. Just peel off the back end there. We're going to have it right here. So that's how we're rocking out with it for now. So there's a bind button right here. I had a crash. There was a actual physical button on here. Receiver came loose and hit my prop on another build that I had and it took this button off and I ended up going with DSMX on that build so I had this receiver loose. So we're going to bind this to the QX7. So let's turn this on. Also, one quick thing about the QX7, people are saying that this doesn't have a charging port for the batteries, when in actuality it does. It's right down here. It's just a different connector. This right here, what people are thinking is a serial connector or whatnot, is actually a, a power connector there. It has this connector here. I don't know if you guys can see that. And how I know that that's a charging port right there is because I didn't have a battery in here and I used this battery to power it from the outside. I plugged it in and it actually gave power to it. So I said, oh, this right here is the charging port there. Okay, let's do this together. I'm not really a Tyrannus guy, so <laughs> I might stumble through some of the, uh, I might stumble through some of the options on here, but we're gonna try to do this together. So from this screen here, we're going to press the menu button that gets us in here. I know that much. We're going to use the wheel to scroll down to three. Create a model by pressing this twice. And so we're on model three. Now we're going to hit the page button. And we're going to scroll down. I think I went down too far. <laughs> Okay, there's the bind there. So the the menu is laid out a little different on this than it is on the Tyrannus Plus. So this is the bind. The bind is all the way up here on the Tyrannus Plus. You have to scroll all the way down in the menu to get to the bind. So we're going to go. Let's see, we're gonna bind it for now. Let's just bind it. So we're gonna put this in bind mode. So, press this in, with the screwdriver. And then power it on.
down the light is off as you can see so we're going to get this out of bind mode by pressing this wheel in again so we're going to turn this off plug it back in and now the light is solid see that so now it's bound to this transmitter here so now we have to set up some modes in the transmitter well we have to do our input channels really so let's see we're gonna hit the page button hit it again again these are the inputs here so we're gonna go down to five this input is going to be the source is going to be this we want it to be this switch here so we're going to press with the S1 highlighted and hit that switch so that selects that switch there let's go back in we're going to hit the menu button hit page page again we're going to keep hitting page until we get down to this inputs so then we're going to go to six and press the knob in so we're going to we're going to go down to source press the wheel in then we're going to hit this switch here that makes it switch to sh there and we're just going to exit out i think this is a great idea for beginners to put the switch the mode switch right here so you can learn acro you can put acro and angle mode on this here and whenever you get in trouble you can just squeeze on this i borrowed that from the Aiton. the Aiton has a button like that called the brake button and essentially that's what it does and so i implement that and when i'm setting up these little models you can use the trainer switch here to put your angle mode on there so you can squeeze on it when you're in acro this way it'll be an acro you'll be flying acro and if you get in any type of trouble then you can pull on that and it'll stabilize it okay so let's have a look at this thing on beta flight we're going to just plug in here it connects automatically now this is an example of what you shouldn't do you shouldn't have your props still on the aircraft <laughs> but I'm going to do it because I'm too lazy to remove the props right now so I'm just going to hold on to this part right here really tight and so as you can see it's responding to the movements barely I find that sometimes it does that unless you have it plugged in when you have it plugged in it hardly ever does that it's always faster but we have to get a, a battery here anyhow okay so we're going to plug the battery in because the receiver doesn't respond unless you give power to it. Now that noise there, either my Tyrannus needs to be calibrated, the sticks need to be recalibrated, or the ESCs on here need to be calibrated. So first I just want to show you guys what I have on the ports. So here on the ports. UART2, the Serial RX has to be selected on that. And then you hit Save and Reboot down here. Let's go to Configuration. On Configuration, it's set to one shot, 125. I'm just going to leave well enough alone. <laughs> leave it just like that. And my motor stop, I like to have that off. Because when you have it off, that means when you arm the quadcopter then the props spin up I like that I don't like the props to stop anymore and so the minimum throttle I like to have that on 1035 for this craft here and your maximum throttle is at 2000 your minimum command is at 1000 so we're gonna go down a little so I can show you guys what the receiver tab is supposed to look like with this I don't see it for some reason. Here it is here. So, oh, I got to enable 
expert mode on this here. So up there in the corner you have to hit that switch over so you can see like the fail safe tab and all of that stuff. So here on the receiver tab you have to have serial based receiver selected and you have to select S bus on the drop down menu under it. The gyro update frequency, I like to have that on 2K. The pit loop frequency, I like to have that on 1K. Hit save and reboot down there to save everything. Here, I like to turn all of this stuff off because it doesn't have a black box or any of that stuff on it. So I just turn that off. Hit save and reboot to save the commands. Well, the new settings that you set up there. The fail safe, I like to have it on just drop. It's already set to drop, so that's cool. My pit tuning, let's have a look at that. I like my pitch and roll to be on 80 and my yaw to be on 0.73. So it's 0.80 for the roll and pitch and 0.73 for the yaw. Now, sometimes that yield different flight characteristics. I noticed that with the King Kong Tiny 7 and the Chairson CX95S, I set both, both of those to the same PIDs and they fly different. The roll is slower on one of them. I can't remember which one has the slower roll anyhow. Moving right along to the receiver tab, we have to have the channel map set to TAER1234. Now, some, this thing is still drifting a lot, I'm thinking. Maybe the Tyrannus has to be recalibrated or the ESCs has to be recalibrated on this thing. And you can hear it. You know, that small input, which is causing that. So I got all my channels here working. Everything's responding. And these motors can sometimes start to spin up unexpectedly. That's why you're supposed to have these <laughs> props off it. But I'm still holding it tight, still mindful of that. Now my modes tab. I don't know if this is showing up well on camera, but there's a little yellow dot here indicating that the um, switch is pushed back. Now, the default position of the switches to be off is supposed to be away from you. That's the standard. It's about all the switches away from you. Just remember that. And if you have any of your switches towards you, when you turn it on, the Tyrannus will let you know. It'll, it'll give you a switch warning. So you want it set up so that when you pull the switch towards you, it arms. So right now, with it in this position away from me, the dot is over this side. So when I pull it towards me, the dot is going to move up here. So this is where you want your... Uh, section to be highlighted there so you push the sliders over to highlight this area here because you want to surround that little dot now I'll hit the switch now it's going to power up though because I got the battery plugged in so check it out so now the dot is over this side over here and it armed because I have this area highlighted when I hit the switch away from me the dot moves down here so it's not highlighted, so it's disarmed. So you want to move your slider up here. Your air mode, you want to have it over this side because when I pull this switch towards me, the dot moves over here. So you want to have this highlighted. And for angle mode, I have it down this end because that switch there, uh, when it's in its resting position, we're talking about the trainer switch now. I think that that's awesome to use for beginners and that's why I'm showing you guys this way in this video. I got that from the Traxxas Aiton. And it, the Traxxas Aiton has a brake button, an air brake button. So when you have it in acro mode and you get into some trouble, you can just mash on that button. You can just mash on the air brake button and it'll get you out of trouble. It'll stabilize. Well, that's the same thing that I'm trying to recreate in this here with the trainer switch here. It's bounces back so whenever you squeeze on this you can have it go into angle mode so you can have it in air mode learning how to fly acro and then once you get into trouble you can squeeze on this 
and that'll stabilize you. It'll act as an air brake. <laughs> so I borrowed that from the Traxxas Aiton, implemented that in my setup for beginners that I recommend. And so that's why I'm showing you guys how to do it this way. And you have to hit, make sure you hit save to save those settings. You can easily just set one of these switches to be the modes. That's a lot of people like to fly with three modes. They use the angle mode, the air mode, and they'll be use they'll be using horizon. Horizon mode is kind of funny to me. I don't really like horizon mode because sometimes it doesn't always auto stabilize, and that's the problem that I'll be having with it. Sometimes I'll I'll become dependent on the auto leveling, and it won't work out for me. You know, it I'll have a crash or something because it didn't auto level fast enough or it just didn't auto level but it's auto leveling in this and you can still do flips if you push the stick all the way to the either side if you get full input on the sticks on the right stick it'll do a flip in that direction so and that's pretty much it i guess i could show you guys how to calibrate the escs we're going to unplug the battery for that So the battery's unplugged now. Now how you do this is you go to the this switch over here, ask you if you're sure that you understand the risks and that you have the props removed, but I don't have mine re removed, but I'm going to do it anyway cuz I know what I'm doing. <laughs> so we're going to hit that switch to allow the motors to turn on and then we're going to raise the master value all the way up to the top. So it's at its highest point. You can see each motor is revved all the way up, but there's no power. Now, once you plug in your battery supply, once you plug in your battery power, the ESCs will know that you're just trying to recalibrate the ESCs because the value is all the way up. So let's see. Sometimes it might spool up, so you got to be careful that you have the props off it. But I'm going to plug it up here. Should hear the ESCs chime. Letting you know that it's ready for recalibration. And so you just lower the value all the way to the bottom. Then you get that little chime there and you're done. So you can hit this switch back off. And so that's it. This thing is ready to go fly. Let's go check it out. All right, y'all. So we out here with it. It's the King Kong Q90, and as you can see, I got the 90 GT props on it, and got the stock battery charged up and all. So let's get this thing plugged up. Let's turn the transmitter on first. Okay, we got the transmitter on. going to hand launch this thing. Steady for it. Okay, we should be ready to go. Not yet. Okay, here we go. Right away, let's get a punch out. So nice punch out on it. <laughs> this thing flies nice. Very windy out here. Oh, 
lost my orientation. Glad I didn't smack right into it. So, oh, let's look at the prop. The prop looked like it bent a little bit. Took a stress hit on the prop right there. Should be able to just bend it back though. These props are pretty tough. Man, it must have took a hard hit. Okay, look like the prop is back in order now. Just about. Got to get the right pitch back on it. <laughs> okay, looks like it's cool again. Let's check it out. Actually, let's take off from down there. Sounds a little different. Yeah, that prop isn't right. Let me land it. See if I can get this prop a little better. Or maybe it's another prop still. Bang. Doesn't appear to be another prop bang. Let's check the pitch on all of them. Okay, looks like I got the correct pitch back on it now. Try to pick off with it. Okay, sounds better now. I tried to put the yellow props on the front and the red props in the rear for orientation purposes. This thing is so tiny, and those lights really confuse me on it. So this one seems like it's a little harder to fly Acrel. <laughs> it could be the wind too. The wind is blowing pretty hard. kind of hard for me to hold the hover. I got to pitch it towards the wind. So that's why I want to angle like that. We're back in angle mode now. Just too much for me. I think we just ran out of battery power actually and it just did a dive so that's it all the battery power we got left in this thing is the q90 thanks for watching